Uh, dear Saidi, can you do <laughs> contemplation through your daily awrad or should you sit for the faqr completely separate? Contemplation for the daily awrad? No, all, all of it, no, inshaAllah. That anytime you want to do tafakkur, you can do it. Means that you can sit, connect your heart and do your awrad. You can sit, connect your heart, do some breathing. Or you can just sit and play salawats and, and do a whole sort of deep meditation. But all of it has to be in a state of, of tafakkur that even when you make your salah you should be in tafakkur. You should have made the madad, made the connection that, that I want to pray but I don't want to be present. And that I see myself as nothing and that I'm in the dress of the shaykh and the shaykh is praying, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How can we prepare best for the next pandemic? We're already in it inshaAllah <laughs> that uh, everything is the same, that all the vitamins are the same. That's why this, this wasn't like a one time have your ginger, your turmeric. Your zinc, your vitamin D and all the vitamins that were on the list of everybody to have again according to your medical guidelines and what your health and, and what your doctors recommend for you that you don't have an allergy to something. But all of those preparations, the taweezes, the trainings for energy, the, the training for all of these realities because these are a physical and a spiritual attack. So that these beings that are coming, these reptilians and shayateens, they're not from the real shaitans but they are marada, they are of an evil nature creatures because the shayateen are something completely different. These evil natured beings they want to approach humans, as a result when they get near the human they become sick. So these shots are for people to be tolerant to possession so that people can come close to these creatures without dying. But they don't do any spiritual practices. So one is that the believer has to have physical health so they keep themselves healthy, exercising, taking their vitamins. But more important is their spiritual health because as soon as this being comes close to the body, if your body is healthy you can begin to fight off the cold and the flu. And if you're spiritually healthy then your zikrs and your recitations begin to raise your frequency, your soul heats up and begin to push away all these negativities. So the power of the soul has an unimaginable power compared to the jinn. وَلَكَ كَرَانَ بَانِي آدَم Although the jinn nations are powerful but they're nowhere in comparison to the soul of insan. For if Allah to send a support to the soul of insan then that's something completely different. Their power and the power in which it resonates is a Muhammadan light, a Muhammadan haqqaiq. So that then pushes away every nefarious and bad creature and bad being. And the only way the jinn can achieve that reality is if they take their bayat and that they achieve a station of being a mu'man. And their bayat at that level is life and death. If they should break their bayat they die because of the extreme power that Allah will dress them with and that their extreme loyalty to their allegiance. So their allegiance is life and death at that level. That's why they don't interfere with humans. The mu'man jinn that only Allah are talking about, you call them they don't talk to you. You try to reach them they have nothing to do with you. Their allegiance and their discipline are, are very high level. They only take their command from the command of Prophet through the chain of command through these ulul am. That's why they don't involve themselves in human activities. The lesser ones they involve themselves in human activities and do bad things and they, they do Qur'an and all these, these people who use these creatures and use these things that's of a very bad and low level. That's not of these uh, mu'min and, and uh, high level realities, inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam During these hard times, do you have any advice to how to protect our children? Same way we protect ourselves. That the, <coughs> the practices that we do, put the taweez upon the children, put the, the practices upon the children, to have them sitting in the zikr. The zikrs are washing. So when they sit in the zikr association and they can be live or later on a rebroadcast and you don't have to search for a physical zikr because that may not be the same reality and we don't know who's there and what their teachings are. So just listening to the broadcast in the home is an immense washing that wash away every type of difficulty and every type of negativity, the taweez upon them and then alhamdulillah the rest is in Allah's hands. That we took our precautions and we, we took the, the requirements, we took one step and inshaAllah Allah take 99 steps towards us to protect us against these difficulties. Because their, theirs is a high survival rate because their body's healthy. So who were dying in all of these sicknesses were the old because their physical body was weakened so when these creatures approached them the physical body died before they could be possessed. The younger one, the danger is possession because their physical body is healthy. So they'll be able to tolerate the creatures coming close to them. And then what saves the child is then the zikr associations, the salawats, the, the namaz, the, all the things that they're already doing. That becomes a source of their soul protection to push away anything trying to enter into their being inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is it alright to meditate while your child is asleep on you? Sure, meditate while your child is with you and meditate all the time thinking about your children. Bring them into your tafakkur, we've said that many times that when you're sitting and meditating you're entering into a state of a, a reality. And that when you're asking to connect with the shaykh, dress me from your light, visualize your children, visualize those loved ones that you have and say, please dress them, bless them and, and fill their soul with lights, take away any type of difficulty. If they're sick and not well then same, you're using the same power. And these are all the teachings of manifestations for the last few weeks and all the teachings of tafakkur that Contemplate and ask that Ya Rabbi send an energy onto them, send these lights upon them, take away this difficulty from within them and you begin to operate from the world of light more than the physical world. And that's what's important is develop this reality and develop this understanding, get the timeless reality, get all of these teachings and begin to implement them and make them to be real. and give support and share links because that is the sign of faith. This is all an ocean of faith. If you take these practices and you begin to do the practices but nothing is opening for you, there's a lack of your faith. So when you believe something and you do it with your belief, well then your belief is what? That these are Muhammadiyoon. These are all representatives of Sayyidina Muhammad Well then if Prophet was with me right now what would I be doing? I would be supporting, I would be giving my life in that direction. Well that's the sincerity of iman and faith. So when we do all these things and we support and then we meditate and contemplate Allah open it to be real. And that's what's important is that we're doing all that's necessary for the practices to become something I believe in and it becomes real. And then it's up to Allah how real He's going to make it for the servant. But those tools have to be there, you don't pluck on these things that reality doesn't open, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, are there any effects? Uh, what effects does a book about dragons have on the kids? For them to believe in dragons? 
You can teach them at the same time that the believers have believing dragons and that the dragons from the heavens that are the guardians. So you can slowly, slowly teach that, yeah we do have dragons in Islam and that they are the, the a very mighty angel that Allah has created to guard Jahannam. Because whatever is bad you want to make sure it stays in there and doesn't enter into your paradise. If Allah didn't create them to be the most powerful well then our paradise would have been destroyed by shayateen of Jahannam. So because of the power and might that Allah has given to them to guard our paradise for us to have a paradise then yes they're very powerful. Shall uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Are ETs the same as demons or some other evil? ETs are the jinn, extraterrestrials and, and all the jinn races. When we say devil and we say something demonic it's an expression or an adjective of a bad nature. Actual devils they're of something completely different. <clears throat> That's, that's a very fierce sort of reality. The, the nefarious jinn races and if they're of a demonic nature means they're of an evil nature and these aliens are of a jinn nature, some of them good, some of them bad. Inshaallah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, What is the role of crows in spirituality? The role of crows? Yeah birds have a, have a, have a reality and crows are, are not too liked. Yeah so the crow has a, has a, has a, a not so good nature to it and not, not Yeah, the, their nature is not very good. <laughs> that a lot of the, the, the bad jinn can work through them so that they come and they spy through their eyes and they give themselves easily to negativity like the dog of birds. That because of the nature of the dog they can easily be possessed. Some may have a nice dog but the nature of a dog and the danger the dog faces is that it can be easily possessed by nefarious jinn. So the dog go outside, nefarious jinn can jump into it and come into the home and as a means of that they enter into the home environment. But again Allah gives different realities to these different creatures. Now cat is something different, the cat has a zikr from Allah as a result of its zikr the bad creatures can't enter the cat. So if they try to enter the cat, the cat by its nature has a zikr that begins to shudder and to cause damage to these creatures. And that's why Prophet then had and, and expressed the interest within cats and Sayyidina Abu Hurairah the conveyor of immense amounts of realities was the father of cats and was surrounded by 40 cats or 100 cats because of the immense nature of their zikr as a protection against bad creatures and that they carry many beautific creatures within their reality. So pious people surround themselves with cats, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa there are many rage incidents around, especially in Indo-Pak region. Reminds mm. me of Burning Man festival that you mentioned a few weeks ago. Should we recite anything specific? Are you attending and asking to recite? <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting at home, stay away from these things. These are uh, callings of shayateen and these are associations of shaitan. So when you hear like a zikr and a mawlid, well shaitan has his own version and those are his concerts and his agents that are now entering into every land 
to do their rituals and to do their events. So those are you know uh, of an old time we said before, in old times the witch doctor would come, he would make a, a place, he would begin to make a fire and everybody would raise their hands to, to pay tribute and ceremony and then they would do something and that was a ritual in which was their ceremony. Well now he pays these witch doctors millions of dollars and they call hundreds of thousands of people to their events. And they even do now their sacrifice, people get killed in their events, then they give their allegiance in the events. So, so many things are happening in these things and possessing people. So this is uh, the modern day version of all of these but on a much grander scale because everyone's fighting for the souls of people. Their shaitans are trying to get them towards the, the satanic side. Or Rahman is sending people to do da'wah and bring them back to their paradise reality inshaAllah. Mm, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there a reality behind the Naqshbandi Ta'weez being wrapped in leather and having the shape of an upside down triangle? What? Reality. Our, ta our Ta'weez is wrapped? Yeah. I, would, I would imagine of course there's a reality. <laughs> the fact that it's an upside down triangle? Yeah, you have to study from our website about the two triangles, right? There's two triangles and sun is made of two triangles, one pointed up, one pointed down, right? So the up, upward triangle is related to the soul. The downward triangle is related to their dunya and to their physicality. So there's a whole teaching on that reality of how to control the lower and how to raise the frequency of the higher. And shaitan is big on the lower triangle because he has nothing to do with the higher triangle. So then that has its own energy, that's why their, their karavat has a triangle. Their colors have a triangle. Everything about the, their geometry is about inducing man to be slaved, enslaved by his lower desire. Have you seen their colors for their shirts have a triangle? That's why we don't wear those shirts with colors. Because those triangles are pointing down. So I think they call French color. The, the karavat if they wear their tie it has a… it's a cross at the top and then it has a triangle pointing down. All of these shaitanic geometry they know what they're doing and it's to yoke men and women, yoking means to enslave them to their lower bodily desires. So then Mawlana shaykhs remedy was then the Naqshbandi Ta'weez had to do with the power within the Ta'weez to break that lower reality and to safeguard the lower triangle. Because you don't need Ta'weez for the higher triangle, it's from the soul. The Ta'weez is for the physical and to break the enslavement that been put upon the physicality from its worshipping Allah and to submitting itself to Allah Is there a reality We said the lower triangle is what? Was ignorance, anger, fire. Right side ignorance. Left is the heart, is to put anger into the heart, this is all shaitan is interested in. Is that on your right side to make you to be ignorant, your left where your heart is, is to, to have anger. As a result of ignorance and anger you're going to have on your lower fire. So he wants humanity to be ignorant 
He wants them to be filled with anger in their heart because anger is kufr, it's the opposite of faith. So their, their heart will have no faith, means Allah won't reside within their heart. And as a result their lower level because the triangle points down. So their lower body will be operating with the immense fire and the fire of all negativity, all badness, all violence and all bad character. So the only thing that can conquer the ignorance is Islam and the only thing that can come against anger is Iman. And the only thing that can come against the fire of bad character is then maqam al-ihsan. So Islam, Iman wal maqam al-ihsan will counter all of the attacks that shaitan is making upon the body. So we're two triangles and that's why when you do the double helix instead of rounding your double helix make it like a triangle, right? So you see double helix goes like this up and then another double helix down. So the, the double helix that goes up has two hands and then the double helix that's going down to the two feet. I don't have a paper. Do you see the double helix? InshaAllah. That's good. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Are these jinns the same entity spoken of in the book of Enoch or are they the same, uh, some other creation for lack of better term? In the book of who? Enoch Oh, Emmet? <laughs> book of Enoch? Book of Enoch? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I haven't read book of Enoch but there is a book of Enoch and they talk about many of these creatures and many of them that were visible at that time and gigantic, small, huge, all different races and they were visible to mankind. In previous times the jinn races were visible, Prophet banished them to the unseen. Before Prophet they were visible creatures and that's why there were all sorts of dragons and images and the, the, these nations that were fighting them, the Druids, the, the old English races, all of them were familiar with these and they have drawings of them. But after the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad they were banished into the unseen and if they make themselves to be visible, there's their most weakest state. Their most vulnerable state is if they manifest into a physicality. At that moment if they get killed they die. So the people who find these bodies is that maybe one of them began to manifest and got shot. At that state the body will die, otherwise the jinn race they don't die. You, you can't shoot them, you can't do anything to kill them like that. So that's why they have long lives. If they manifest that's their weakest state. So they choose not to manifest and they keep themselves hidden. But in their hidden state they are subject to elements. So water, uh, urine, different things can burn and kill them. So as a result they seek shelter within objects. So they hide themselves within a tree, within a bush, within a metal device, within a doll, within a statue. And that's why Prophet was forbidding these because that reality that don't have these statues because these creatures hide in them and they'll get your attention and you say, oh my god this statue is so lucky for me, that's the jinn inspiring you. And then you start to rub the statue thinking, I get five dollars every time I do that. And then before you know it the person become both parast. And that was the immense reality that Prophet was bringing for the nation. So then because of that weakness they hide within these objects. 
But a time comes when they decide that they're going to manifest themselves then their contracts are broken and they are in a perishable state. And that's why then becomes the final battle where they know that they battle and they die because they've manifested. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum uh, can these jinns hide inside insan? Of course they can. Wait, wait, you didn't read the book? Timeless reality, two copies for you. <laughs> one for you and one to give to your friend. That's the whole teaching, that's whole possession, that's the whole of the, these understandings of why people are crazy. Because they are occupying them, why people were called genius because genies were inside of them. So their, their world is to occupy humanity and to bring their, their world onto this earth with their technologies and their understandings. And the world of malakut and spiritual practices is to build your soul's power to prepare for all of these difficulties coming upon the earth inshaAllah. Assalamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, How can we save ourselves from jealousy when we're interacting with same thing which always pop up, jealousy in my life, whenever I see to those things like their success and my success? Yeah, <clears throat> the root of everything is anger. Right. So if we imagine this bad character is like a fireplace, if there's one flame inside that fireplace whatever you put upon it is going to ignite. So the slightest amount of jealousy on anger becomes like a rage. Because the jealousy comes, hits the flame of anger and explodes. That's what makes these bad characteristics bad is the anger, the qada. So if we work on the anger and bring the ability to bring my anger down, my anger down and my anger down. Don't say, no I'm not, I, I'm not angry, I'm a jealous person. No, no, it's first you're an angry person, control the anger within yourself subdue the fire of that anger, bring down the anger, bring down the anger, you find that jealousy is not that flammable because you can control it. Then when your rational mind thinks and begins to understand, well, there was nothing to be jealous about, that wasn't like that, that wasn't like this because then your heart will overtake and say, you were wrong in understanding. But jealousy like a gas on the fire. You don't think anymore, you're not thinking anything, you're just in rage and that's where all the, the characteristics are coming. So everything, every bad characteristic is really made bad because of the adab and the anger. So that's why the first characteristic is to take away my anger, that I'm not going to be explosive, I'm not going to have this anger, I'm going to keep making my wudu. As soon as I feel angry I have to make wudu, I have to go pray two rakat salat wudu. And I have to begin my salawats, make sure I always have my wudu, always have my taweez, always making my salawats. And then Allah begin to train the servant that in 40 days is going to test them from every direction possible, from a, a, a jealousy, from this, from that. But its root was by your shaykh you were told was no, it was anger. So none of those characteristics should come out until they worked on their anger. And when they subdue the anger that flame isn't there to make everything so explosive. Then the heart will be able to come and begin to explain the hikmah and the wisdom and then they operate a life that is from a different tajalli, not from a tajalli of anger. Because anger you know people kill each other based on anger, they make a mistake and it, it's, it's finished, there's no way to take it back. And that's why anger takes us outside of belief because when that fire hits it takes away the light of iman. 
because at that time the servant is not operating from faith and they have to regain their shahada, regain their faith and come back into Islam. That's why people don't understand when somebody say, oh you're leaving your Islam then start getting angrier even more. So no actually Prophet said that as soon as you become qadab, as soon as you enter into qadab you entered into kufr, kufr the disbelief. So it means you left your faith at that moment. You actually have to wash and make your shahada to regain your faith back. And if you keep operating in that state you're operating outside of your faith. So that's the immense danger of anger and that's the fire that shaitan is trying to throw onto everyone. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. It's good two weeks of uh, questions you got there. <laughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi um, Walaykum As Salaam. What should we do if we're noticing that our children are not liking Islam, they're hating Islam? Is there anything we can do? Yeah, make sure where, where did you introduce them to Islam? You know if you went to these, these, these places, these houses of worship and they're mean, they're angry and they put people in the closet and they yell and they scream, yeah uh, we've experienced all of these things and, and you know that can be pretty traumatic for, for young people growing up in the west or in different countries when the imam chooses to scream and to yell and you associate that with you know like you know father yelling at the house and, and it's traumatizing. Especially if they have yelling in their home and they go to the mosque and yelling at everyone, everyone's yelling and screaming. It's not a, a learning situation. That's why then those whom inspired by Allah through tariqah their only exposure should be through the tariqah that they listen to the talks, they say, look the shaykh is not yelling and screaming. That's the most amount of comments that would come. They say, MashaAllah shaykh you don't yell and scream. So now my family listens and watches and, and, and so that was the, the nature of tariqah that it's not like that and it's beatific, has the salawats. So it's a matter of what, what Islam are we introducing to people? Is it of a loving nature, soft nature, quiet nature and then in an, in an English that they can understand. So even these realities are realities but many of the young students understand them to the degree that they have the capacity inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi uh, Shaykh Nazim had said to save on gold and silver in coming difficult times, yes. do I convert all my money to gold and silver? <laughs> Well gold and silver is so expensive now, gold that yeah, you, you, you're going to have uh, not much to convert because it's so expensive. But no you don't live like that. You just need a, a small amount of a few coins in the event that everything collapses and they don't take your credit card. And you need to go get some food and some supplies, inshaAllah you have supplies in your home always that you, you have like a little store inside your home that you use and that you replenish. And then you have emergency currency of little gold coins, pure gold coins and pure sil silver coins and just a small amount for emergencies. You don't need a handload because you're not going to be living for years like that trying to buy you know a BMW with this kind of money. This is just survival to go to a nearby farm and say that I want to buy some provision and they only take it that's I'm a small denomination of gold. So that's a sign of readiness and that's a sign of heavenly currency. The only currency that Allah acknowledges in Qur'an is gold and silver. So it has a barakah, has a blessing and it's a completion of faith. That when we have that it's a sign from Allah that we have a, a faith in the last days and, and the coming of, of difficult events. But not to overreact and sell everything just to have some gold coins inshaAllah. Because you have to sell everything just to have a whole bunch of gold coins, it's so expensive. And then everybody will want to rob you to take your gold coins. <laughs> Stop it, no. Uh, just a few. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa um, if someone sees an orb of glowing light doing tawaf around a child's heart, is that a jinn or an angel? 
These orbs of light are, are of a jinn nature, angels not something visible. They don't, they don't make themselves visible and, and the majority of times it's not that. If the angel wants to show itself it can but it's not at a visible frequency. And these energies when they don't have a mass, any energy that we see without a mass it becomes a sphere because there's no mass to it. So anytime you see these orbs this is the jinn nations. And if they're mu'min then they're around people and uh, if they're doing something then they're under Allah's command to do something. Or you see them around people and children and parks and outdoor everywhere. Cameras pick up these lights everywhere and this is their race inshaAllah and their nature. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata mi yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Abu Sirisurit al-Fatiha